Okay, today we're doing more um, coming up with equations from words or words to equations. Um, and the last day, you know, we didn't always start with the words. Sometimes it gave us the equation and we came up with the words. Uh, and we're going to look at a few multiple choice questions here that will all be a little bit different. Uh, and there's going to be one open response. So again, a lot of these questions are very similar to what you might see in EQAO. Um, but it's the same kind of thing. What we talked about yesterday, and what we've been talking about for a while now, is the two important things that you need to know about a linear relation are where does it start and what is the change. And what we really focused on yesterday when we were looking at words is how to identify, look at this question has two numbers, okay? And so one of those is going to be the start and one of them is going to be the change. And we have to figure out which one is which. And once we do that, we can answer the question probably. Sometimes there's some steps. In this case, I'm just going to pick which one of these is the proper equation. So once I know what the starting amount is and what the um, change is, I should be able to get that. So let's take, let's read this and see if we can figure it out. The total cost for printing color posters at printing at a printing shop is made up of a $20 fee plus 50 cents per poster. Okay, 50 cents or 0.5 dollars per poster. That word is really important. The word per tells me that that's the change. So the change is 0 0.5. Okay, and then the start is the amount that only happens once, so that's the $20 fee. Okay, doesn't matter how many posters you make, you pay $20, and then if you make 10 posters, you have to figure out how much that would be for 10 posters at 50 cents per poster. So the start is 20. So now, let me see if I can move this over a little bit so I can zoom in here. There we go. So now... I can decide, I can start crossing some out, okay? So this one has, I don't know why it has 0.2 because uh, that wasn't in it, but the start is 20, or this one is looking like the change is 20 or 0.2, okay? Same with B, that would be a change of 20, and that's not what this is, so that's wrong. Okay, this one has a start of 20 and this one has a start of 20. So what's different about them? Well, this one's 50N and this one's 0.5N. So this one looks like 50 cents and this one's 50 cents or 0.5 dollars. But the 0.5 dollars is the one that we had. But even if it said 50 cents, since the 20 is in dollars, I need both of those to be in the same unit. So I can't have one of them dollars and one of them cents. So that means this one has to be correct because it's 0.5 dollars just like I had there. 0.5 dollars is 50 cents, but I can't use dollars and cents in the same question. So the correct answer for this one is D. Alan sells bags of candy in the cafeteria at lunch. Advertising costs him $5 in total. He charges $3 per bag of candy. Which equation represents the relationship between profit and number of bags of candy that he sells? Ooh, this one's very tricky. Uh, we don't see these come up a lot, but it will really make us think about this stuff and hopefully improve our understanding even that much more. What does profit mean? Profit is how much money you have after all of the money that you've spent on something. So whenever you're making something, you're going to spend some money, usually in the beginning, for material, uh, for labor maybe, who knows what it is, right? Like let's say you're making uh, t-shirts with a pattern on them. Well, you got to get the t-shirt, right? You got to get the ink that makes the pattern and the machine that can print the pattern onto the t-shirt. So you're paying money, but then you're going to start selling those t-shirts and you're going to start getting money in. So you've got some money going out, some money going in, and eventually, hopefully, the money that's going in is more than the money going out. And that's when you've made money and that's your profit, the difference between those. So if he is making $3 per bag, that's money he's making. But from that, he has to take away the $5 because that's a cost. So that's money he's losing. So when I look at these, which one looks like I'm losing 5 
dollars, but I'm making three dollars per bag. Well, three dollars per bag looks like that three n, doesn't it? Because that per number tells me that's the change, and I know the change is what's multiplied by the variable. Okay. Maybe somebody thinks it's this because 5 minus 3 is 2. I don't know, but that doesn't make any sense, so it's not that one. This one has a change of 5, but it's not $5 per anything. It was $5 total. One just cost them $5, so it's not that one. So which one of these is it, B or C? And it turns out it is C because this is $3 per um, bag of candy that he sells, but then I have to take away the $5 that they spent in advertising. So just think about that. Let's say they sell three bags of candy. Oops. Okay. How much money would he make? Three times three. Maybe I should change that so it's a bit more obvious. Let's do four bags of candy. So $3 per bag for four bags would be $12. And how much did they spend? $5. Doesn't matter how many bags they sold, sell, they spent $5 on advertising. Okay. So what's the total? Profit. 12 minus Five, which is seven dollars okay and then the more that they sell after that they're just going to make more and more and more what if they only sold one bag how much did they make three times one which is three how much did they spend still five so the profit is three minus five. Oh my gosh, negative two. They lost money because they only made three dollars and they spent five dollars. So that's what profit means. Now you don't need, really need to know too much about profit. Okay, it's that's not a part of this course. The only reason is if it comes up in a question like this, and you might say, well, wait a minute, I don't really understand what profit is. So maybe this is maybe this one example will be enough for us to think about what it means for profit but we don't see that too often. So that's a harder one. Don't worry too much if you don't fully understand it. A couple of these uh, questions today in the lesson here are a little bit trickier. They are gonna push us a bit more, okay? The correct answer for that one was C. Helena has $250 saved up from her summer job. Once school starts, she spends $5 per week on snacks at school. Which of the following equations represents the amount of money remaining in Helena's savings? Before I even do that, I'm going to think about this. Is Helena starting at 250 and the amount of money is increasing? So eventually she'll be at like $1,000 or something like that. Okay. Or is she starting at 250? And the amount of money is decreasing so that at some point she'll be at, you know, $100 or something like that. So she's got $250 saved up from her summer job and she's spending $5. That means it's this graph. She's losing money. She's not making any more money. She's not adding $5 into her account. She's taking $5 from her account. So it's going down. So I can look right away and say, which one of these four is going down? Well, it's D. That's the only one with a minus sign. And, I, and D says that I start okay, at 250 and I take away five every week, right? That's what that one means. C looks like 250 adding $5 per week. This is just 250 minus 5, but if I'm multiplying it by W, then it's the change, and that's 245 per something, which doesn't happen in this situation. And this one is just 250, so that's just looking at the, the one number from the equation and not taking the 5 into account. I think the easiest way to answer that one 
is to realize that that's the right graph and to just realize that, hey, this is a graph that would be going down and realize that that's the only equation in there that's going down. Okay, last multiple choice question. Leanne belongs to a yoga studio. Her totally, total monthly cost consists of an initial fee of $46. Whoops, let's stop right there. There's your start. And $750 per yoga class taken. $750 per, there's your change. Stacy's total monthly cost for a different yoga studio has an initial fee. Okay, look at that. There's your start again, but this is talking about someone else. But it still says initial, but it's six dollars less than Leanne's, and Leanne's was 46. But the cost per class is the same. So cost per class is the same, that's the $750. $6 less than that one. So $6 less than 46 is 40. $6 less than 46 is 40 is, I'll do this, 46 minus 6, which is 40. Now, you don't need to write this down. A multiple choice on EQAO has a place for rough work, but you don't have to show your rough work. It's just there in case you want to scribble stuff down. I'm writing this out so that you can see what I'm thinking in my mind. And if the, so this is the start. Okay, so I'm going to do this, actually, I'm going to do there for the start is 40 because it was six dollars less than the other one so the start is 40 and the change is the same and the change for the other one was 750 so 7.5 750 is the same as 7.5 so which one of these has a change of 7.5 and a start of 40. Start of 40, not a change of 7.5. Start of 40, change of 7.5. Which of the following represents, I didn't even read the question, let me make sure there's no trick here. Which of the following represents Stacy's total monthly cost where n is the number of classes taken? Okay, so that was correct because it's asking for Stacy's, not Leanne's. Okay, Okay, that was four multiple choice. Let's take a look at one open response. A pizza order. Two restaurants offer pizza prices based on the following. Restaurant A is $7 for the pizza and $2.25 per topping. So there's your change. This is for A and there's your start. Restaurant B is $12 for the pizza plus 215 per topping. 215 per topping is my change. $12 is my start. And I really hope we're starting to see that that word per or each is really important. And the other one is a flat fee, a fixed fee, an initial fee. And hopefully we can rep, re, uh, recognize that in the language as well. Ooh, tricky. Both restaurants offer the first three toppings for free. Determine the difference in total cost between the two restaurants for a pizza with 23 toppings on each pizza. Show your work. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to rec I'm going to think about is the first three toppings. Now EQIO likes to throw in these little tricks, okay, and not make it quite straightforward. And if you missed that trick but you did everything else, you would get three out of four, which is good. Okay, um, but to get four out of four, which is how EQIO marks you would have to get the whole thing correct. They're not too picky about how you show your work, but you do have to show more than just writing down the answer. So if first three toppings are free and there's 23 toppings, then you pay for 20 
toppings. So I am actually, for both of these places, only paying for 20 toppings because I'm getting 23 toppings, which is insane. I don't know who would have a pizza with 23 toppings, but anyway, um, it wouldn't fit in the box. You wouldn't be able to pick it up and carry it to, lift it to your mouth. But anyway, it would taste disgusting, but okay. Um, you're getting 23 toppings, but 20, but three are free. So you're paying for 20. Now, what do I need to do to come up with the total cost for each is I'm going to come up with a rule for both of them and use my rule to figure out the cost with when I'm paying for 20 toppings. Okay. So I'm going to start over here with restaurant a and my rule or my equation is going to be C for total cost is the start for A is the seven plus the cost per topping 2.25 times N for number of toppings. Okay, we've done that a lot. I use the start and the change from restaurant A. Restaurant B, same thing. C equals the start for B is 12. And the change is 2.15 per topping. Remember I said number of toppings is 20. So that's N is 20. So C equals 7 plus 2.25 times 20. And C equals 12 plus 2.15 times 20. Okay, now I'm going to get my calculator for both of these. I can punch these straight into my calculator. I don't have to do them in steps. I'll probably show my steps because I want to talk about them, but I'm going to do it straight forward with the calculator at first. If this was EQAO, you have to show this step because you have to show what you're punching into the calculator, but then I could just go 7 plus 2.25 times 20 equals. 52. And you could just write down 52 and you'd be done. That would be totally fine. Okay. And for this one, it's 12 plus 2.15 times 20 or bracket 20, just the way we write it. This one's 55. But if I wanted to do them separately to show if, if I just like doing it that way, and I'm going to do it this way, just because this shows the 12 and that it doesn't change, but that the cost for the toppings does change depending on the toppings, because this one is going to be 7 plus 225 times 20, which is 45. So take a look. I paid more here for the toppings, more in A for the toppings than I did in B, but because B had the higher upfront cost, it still costs more total. Okay, so I found the total cost for each of them. Now I'm going to go back and read the question again. Determine the difference in total cost between the two restaurants for a pizza. And we did a lot of this back when we did fractions and percentages where we calculate the difference. So over here I'm going to just write difference is 55 minus 52, which is $3. So the difference in total cost for the pizza with 23 toppings is $3. And A was the cheaper in that case. Sometimes it asks for which one is cheaper. Sometimes it asks for which one is cheaper and what is the difference. Like it could ask all kinds of things. Okay. And that is the second day of uh, writing equations when we're given words. So we've done a lot of looking at different examples that um, use words to explain the situation. And sometimes that can be overwhelming because even right there, just looking at that, there's a lot of words uh, in this question. It's not a simple kind of math question. Some math questions just say solve. This one's got a lot of words. But what I'm hoping that we can break it down to understanding is that in all of those words, you just have to figure out where, which one's the start and which one's the change. 
and which ones to change comes from things like per or each and which ones to start comes from things like starting cost, initial cost, fixed cost. So there's a few, only a handful of words that we need to look for that will tell us uh, what the start is and what the change is. And by now, I really hope we're good at writing rules based on the start and the change. Um, and then some questions do ask things in a bit of a different way, like a roundabout way, where they actually have two restaurants and they ask for a difference. And that part is a little bit harder or does add a level of um, challenge to this. But when you start to get overwhelmed, stop yourself and say, hold on, let me see if I can figure out what the start is and what the change is. Then maybe I can write a rule. Then from there, maybe I can figure out what to do next. Sometimes we get overwhelmed looking at the big picture and we have to break things down into steps. And that's the kind of step that you can break it down into is for linear relations, always breaking it down to where does it start and what is the change.